This is a really good flying quad. I can't believe how how controllable it is, even just here, like just just doing these straight lines. Usually a three inch just feels all over the place. It's so locked in. I'm, I'm gonna kill this battery. We're at 3.5 volts, so let's just bring it in. It's so, it's really good. It's really good. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and this is the Beta FPV HX115. It is a new, it was new when they sent it to me, and then I let it sit for a couple weeks. I'm sorry, Beta FPV. It is a new, high definition capable, three inch propped micro quad. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna fly it. Because that's what you're here for, right? Let's fly it. And no, it's not super windy out today. It'll be fine, trust me. Let's go. I don't know if I've set my rates on this, to be honest with you. Where are the rates? I think these are the stock rates. That'll be okay. The nose is holding pretty steady when I uh, when I punch the throttle. It moves a little. We're getting some shakes, a few shakes. Let's we'll see what that deal is. It is pretty windy today, so it's fast. I don't, I'm not having an issue, RSSI is looking really good. One of the issues I always run into with these little quads is that the receiver is terrible. In this case, the receiver is a FreeSky RXS, uh, no, FreeSky XM Plus, which is a full range receiver. Hello, pool. That is not, that's my pool, it's winter. It's winter, you guys. We drain the pool in the winter, and then what do you do? I don't know, what are you gonna do? Just let it go, comments. It's winter, there's nothing going on there. Oh, hello. Fly, fly, I'm really happy with how it flies. It doesn't feel like I'm making any concessions to the fact that it's a three inch. Like, I can tell it's a three inch. It doesn't, I'm not gonna say, oh, it flies just like a five inch. But like, I don't feel like I'm limited. It's, the thing about it is, when you fly a three inch, you want like the good parts of a three inch. You don't want it to be just like a five inch, but you don't want it to, you don't want to feel like it's holding you back. And it doesn't. This doesn't feel like it's holding me back. I can tell that it's lightweight. I can tell that the wind is blowing it around in a way that it wouldn't if it were a five inch. And it doesn't have quite the stability of a five inch, but duh, I mean, that's, it's like driving a Miata and complaining that it doesn't have a, you know, a, a eight cylinder engine. You, you, you get what you want to get from each class of vehicle. You want different things. And my first impression is that this is really delivering all the good stuff you want from a three inch without any of the bad stuff, the, the, just the most obvious bad stuff that tends to come along with them. Like terrible range, the video is rock solid. We're only at 200 milliwatts. And usually uh, 25 milliwatts flying through here is a little challenging. And at 200, it's solid. This is solid, this feels just, you know, gut check, this feels like more than 200 milliwatts to me. I don't know if that, I'm not saying that's true, but. We do some smooth flying. This is really nice. It flies when I when I slow down on the sticks and just drifted around. It flies pretty smooth. I'm not jamming the throttle. We're just doing a. I mean, I, I'm not sure I would call this a cine whoop because a cine whoop tends to have ducted props, but it can fly really smooth. Another concern that you might worry about is that because it has a high def board, high def camera, a split style camera on it, that you will um, have latency issues. I'm not, oh, well, there's a little bounce back in that tune, but okay, that's not ideal. We can make me tune this thing a little bit, but I don't feel any bad latency from the camera. I'm sure the latency objectively has to be higher than if it were just a straight FPV camera or a camera like the Tarsier, which has a, both a high def and a standard def English camera. Wow, I'm really impressed. You can't tell because you can't see my face right now, but ah, this flies really good. I think it could fly better. I think we could try and get that last little percent of goodness out of it. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna try and get a good PID tune on this and I'll tell you guys what the best tune I can get is. Stick around for the end. But for now, let's go back into the bench. The motors are 1105 and 5000 kV 
which means they're just about perfect on 3S for these HQ3030 props. The quad can be run on 4S as long as you use these HQ3020 props. You're not gonna wanna use a three blade on 4S with this KV, the ESE just couldn't take it. The one I've got is three millimeters thick, but they've since upgraded it to 4.2 millimeters to increase durability. And the arms are about six millimeters wide. The canopy is injection molded. I think it's ABS, but I'm not 100% sure. And when I posted about this quad on Facebook, some people asked, has the durability problem been fixed? I, I guess there may have been an earlier version of this or maybe another beta FPV quad that had a durability issue. I've been flying the hell out of this one. I really have enjoyed flying this one and I've put in more packs than I usually do when I review a quad. I've crashed the hell out of it and I can say the only place it's starting to show wear is right here at the front where this, this screw from the standoff enters in and the rest of it, it has shown just absolutely no damage whatsoever. The canopy is held on by these 1.5 millimeter screws. The screws go all the way up through these non-threaded standoffs. On the front, the screw screws directly into a threaded molding on the canopy. That is probably the weakest spot. On the sides, the screws go down through and get held on by these nylock nuts right here. At first glance, the HX-115 has a very similar design to the Larva X, which I criticized for its durability. But a major difference between the HX-115 and the Larva is that these standoffs hold the canopy only, and the canopy contains only the camera. That's it. The flight control stack is a completely separate set of standoffs. It is soft mounted, so you got vibration isolation, but if we look at the top, the very top, which is the Runcam Split Nano, this is not soft mounted. So there is a rigid board holding the flight control stack together, and the flight controller is also, they go all the way through the flight controller instead of having kind of a C-clip that clips on. So although there are some superficial similarities to the Larva X in the way that this is kind of stacking up with the camera on top, Beta FPV got everything right that the Larva X got wrong. I've had zero durability issues with this quad in all the time and crashes I've been flying it. The ESC is rated for 12 amps and it's very nice to see that it's got these plug-in connectors here for the motors. So if you do end up changing out a motor, it's very easy to just buy a new one and plug it right in. It's worth pointing out that if you wanted to change out for a different motor, then it would be a little more inconvenient. You'd pro I'd, if I were to do that, I'd probably just cut the connector off the old motor and solder it on, but it's a little bit of a hassle. Are there solder points for the if you did want to put new motors on, I don't see solder points, although perhaps if I were to take it apart, I'd see them. The HX-115 can be ordered with a wide variety of receivers, FreeSky, FlySky, Spectrum, and yes, Crossfire, and there may even be one I've left out, so go check the product page if you want to be sure. This is something that Beta FPV does for almost all, if not all of their quads, and I freaking love it. So many micros that could be better are hamstrung by either having a built-in SPI receiver with terrible range or what if you want Crossfire? Hey, maybe you like Crossfire on your micros. Well, you can get it from Beta FPV straight from the factory. The one I've got has an XM Plus receiver in it. It's accessible from here. I'm not gonna pull off my, my battery pad to show you, but there's a, there's a nice little gap here where if you lift off the battery pad, you can easily get at the receiver. And I can't remember if I mounted the antennas this way or if Beta FPV did. This doesn't look like one of my zip ties. So I'm gonna guess they either mounted them this way or maybe they included the zip ties, but this is how I would suggest mounting the antennas. Just, uh, and it keeps them out of the props and you get okay range. And that just to me seems like the best way to do it. Speaking of the battery pad, you can see that I've got some of my favorite UMA grip here. This is UMA God's battery pad. And if you think, well, it's just gel, what could the difference possibly be? That's fine. Go buy cheap gel. It'll work just fine. I find that this has a really good combination of grip, but not being, well, when you first put it on, it's so sticky, it kind of sticks to the battery and doesn't want to let go. But as it gets just a little bit dirty, then it has just the perfect amount of grip. I almost never have to clean it. It stays just grippy enough. And I really like that. Other battery pads I've used, they'll they'll get dirty and they'll lose their grip and you'll have to clean them. I, you can do that with them a grip, but I, I seldom have to, and I like to use it. But if you don't want to spend that much on battery pad, there's plenty of cheap gel pads you can use. One thing I find a little bit annoying about this is that in order to get at the receiver, you do 
have to pull, you can see the receiver there. You kind of have to pull that off and I'm not sure there's a better way to solve this problem on a quad this small, but it's a small annoyance. I'm also really happy that Beta FPV gives you a proper battery strap with like a buckle and a pull through. So many of these micros, I thought I had one here to show you, but they just have a little Velcro strap and it doesn't hold as well. You can't really cinch it down. This is the kind of battery strap I prefer. It's a little hard to tell there, but you can also see that there is a capacitor pre-installed on the X-T30. You're gonna to wanna to be a little bit careful of this as you're cinching down the battery strap or, or whatever. You're not gonna to wanna to mangle that, but that adds just a little bit of filtering, especially on the higher voltage batteries. That's gonna help keep your video clean and keep your quad from like falling out of the air or flying away. It also means that you can move the filters further to get better performance out of the quad. And later in the video, I'm gonna show you my optimal PID tune, and I'm gonna give you my configuration settings for moving to Betaflight 4.1. I recommend that you move to Betaflight 4.1. This quad ships with 355 on it, and that's another criticism. But I'm gonna show you how to upgrade it to Betaflight 4.1 and give you my configuration for it a little bit later in the video. I don't know why I seem to be the only person in the world who knows that if you just leave an antenna sticking out the back of a quad like this, it will get chopped up by the props. And sure enough, that's what this one did. And sure enough, that's why I've got it taped up here. And this is a far from ideal, but I don't care if it gets chopped by the props, then it's ruined. There is a little clip here that I guess is designed to kind of like hold the antenna up and out of the way and it doesn't work. And I just, have no concept of why micro manufacturers seem to intentionally overlook it it can't be it has to be intentional because it's so obvious how, how do you guys not chop the props in in when you're testing these things and, and then I, i'm just speechless so this is how mine looks and it looks dumb and i don't know but i don't, don't want my antenna to get chopped up so there you go the up tilt on the HX115 is easy to adjust. You just push on the camera. It can go down to, that looks like, oh, maybe 15 or 20 degrees, quite low for freestyly flying and up to, well, probably about, looks like about 45 or maybe 50 degrees at most. So if you're looking for 60 degree Matty stunts, you're out of luck, but it goes from pretty low to pretty high. The only thing holding the angle is the tension of these screws. And I did find that the angle would sometimes move in a hard crash. That wasn't ideal. If I had this quad long-term, I might try to find some way to kind of set the angle. I don't know, but maybe if you just tighten the screws down a little bit, it would be okay. The camera on this is the Runcam Split Nano. That's the 20 millimeter Runcam Split. And in, I, I'm gonna do a whole separate review, reviewing just the camera. But the short version is that I've been pretty impressed with the image quality. And with the split cameras, you always wonder about the latency. At, when I first got it, I said the latency is no problem. And then for some reason, when I turned the camera on one time, there was just this crazy latency. You could even see it when I just held the quad and tipped it in my hand. I don't know what caused that. Maybe my SD card needed to be formatted. Maybe I needed a faster SD card or maybe just rebooting it would, would sort it out. I tried switching from 1080p 60 to 1080p 30 and it didn't fix it. Then I switched to 720p and it did fix it, but it doesn't change the fact that it was working fine on 1080p 60 before. Overall, I like so much about this quad and in general, the Split Nano behaved well for me and gave much better image quality than you're, you're ever gonna get off of an SD cam. Overall, if I had to pick between this one and there's another version of the HX115 that has a standard definition camera, I would pick the one with the Runcam Split Nano. But if you don't care as much about high def recording and you want a little bit more confidence that the camera's not gonna like just be weird on you one day, the non HD version would be the one you would get. I have a confession. I've been having so much freaking fun with this quad on 3S. I haven't even tried it on 4S yet. I almost forgot. I was like, this is so good. I'm gonna go in and do the review and let's try it on 4S and see what happens. I've got the two blade props on here and I have a 4S. It's a 520 milliamp hour pack, which is bigger than you're technically supposed to use, but it's the only 4S I have that works with this quad. So let's just do it.
to be honest with you. I kind of expected 4S to be overkill. Um, I still think 3S on three blades is the right place to be for freestyle, but this is like, this is I've, what racing is, wow. <laughs> Crazy. So then, speaking of pid tuning, I'm not gonna take 15 minutes out of the middle of this video to show you the whole process of pid tuning this quad. I'm gonna put that in a separate video. But this is how the quad was flying. At the beginning of the video, you saw the quad basically flying as it came out of the box on Betaflight 355. Here is how it's flying at the end of upgrading it to Betaflight 4.1 and doing a, a, a pid tune on it, at least as best as I could get. If you like the way that this quad is flying, I have links down in the video description to the full command line dump, and there are two of them there. The first one is just if you want to upgrade to Betaflight 4.1 and fly on the default pids. I recommend you do that. In my opinion, this was, that was better than the stock pids on Betaflight 355. If you want to really push the boundaries, I've also got my full PID tune. However, you need to be aware that there is some risk to doing that. I have pushed this thing to the nth degree, and if you put that on there, you risk smoking a motor or having your quad fly away. Only do that if you know how to deal with that risk. Enjoy. So then we come to the end of the video, and as always, the question, should you buy it? And this is a tough one for me, but not for the reason you think. My goal when I do a product review is not to tell you whether I think you should buy it, but to tell you the information you need to help you figure out whether you want to buy it. But this thing is so freaking good that I'm having a hard time figuring out who should not buy it. And I kind of just want to go, it's so good, buy it. It's 160 bucks. It's 200-ish bucks with the high definition option. That's a lot of money. You could definitely build cheaper three inch quads out there. It may not be for you if what you're looking for is like, this is a lightweight three inch, more focused toward racing, although very capable at freestyle. If you're looking for something more like an Acrobrat with like 1507 motors and a thousand milliamp hour 4S battery, a little heavier three inch, those do exist and that this is definitely not that, but this is very, very good. And I haven't even heard any reliability, beta, some beta FPV quads have real reliability issues. This ESC and flight controller, from what I can tell, it's still early, but from what I can tell, they're, this is a very, very good three inch. So who shouldn't buy it? I don't know. If you're in the market for a three inch and you want a lightweight racing, but also pretty good for acro with high definition and you got around $200 to spend, uh, this is the one uh, so far. This is the best one I've flown, like by miles, by miles. Everything else I fly it and I'm like, yeah, it flies okay for a three inch. This one I fly it and I'm just like, that flies pretty good. So if you agree and you want to give it a try there are links in the video description and i do like to take a minute to remind you that they are affiliate links and that's one of the ways that i support myself doing videos like this it's taken about three days of work okay some of that three days was me just flying it because i was having fun <laughs> well you can help support me by using those affiliate links click those links and make any purchase at the affiliated vendor you do not actually have to buy this if you want to buy anything Click those links before you shop and I get a small commission. That's one of the ways I support myself. That's going to do it for this video. I got to get this edited and get this up because I'm, I'm really excited about this quad. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. My eyelid. My eyelid. Like, okay. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs>